I'm Shana Hoffman, and along with my colleague, we're two of the co-founders of CareSolver. So CareSolver uh, creates customized action-oriented care guides to help the family caregivers manage loved ones' dementia care. We have a solution that's for uh, PC, for tablet, and for mobile. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? So greater than 70% of dementia care is provided out in the community by family caregivers. Um, and unfortunately, when you look at the number of cognitively impaired seniors, which is 1.5% of the hospitalizations, they, or 1.5% of the population, they actually account for about 10% of the, of the hospitalizations. So why is this the case? So unfortunately, the formal care system doesn't support caregivers in a meaningful way. Um, and really, they're asked to be the quarterbacks of care with limited access to training, in the form of disease state specific instructions for caring for different um, elements of care, figuring out how to deal with caregiver strain, financing care, assembling a care team. They also don't have access to tools, so things like managing medications, identifying different risk areas, different health assessments to identify what kind of care their parent or loved one might need, and then tracking biometric readings. And the last piece is really around resources, so the things that they might need to successfully execute on a care plan if they do have one in place, so finding benefits in their area, how-to videos, all of this being aggregated in a central repository that they can access. So this leads to poor outcomes for cognitively impaired seniors, for caregivers, and then for the health system more broadly. And that's really what we're trying to solve. So here's the solution. So CareSolver believes that the solution is through caregiver education, training, and activation. Giving caregivers access to the right steps at the right place at the right time, and that's what leads to better outcomes. So our solution is a simple, easy to use caregiver platform, caregiving platform, which I'll take you through in a couple different steps here, but really it focuses on those elements of training, so these specific modules on specific disease states that you're managing, the tools in the form of these medication management tools, smart checklists, being able to coordinate across a care team, and then also resources. So here you see an example of a blog article, and then also a list of providers in the area. So let's take a look at CareSolver in action. So here's an example of Susan and her dad, Joe. Joe was diagnosed with dementia two years ago. Susan is the primary caregiver. In the absence of a system like CareSolver, Susan's overwhelmed in trying to find action-oriented information on caring for Joe and also caring for herself. And across probably our 200 interview with caregivers caring for aging loved ones with dementia and without dementia, this was kind of the story we heard time and time again. So how does CareSolver help this situation? So Susan registers for CareSolver, enters some simple information about herself, and enters about the conditions that are relevant to her. We also do partner with the formal care system, and so in cases where they're coming in through the healthcare system, this information will be pre-populated. Then she receives a customized lesson plan. So we've worked with subject matter experts, health literacy experts, health coaches, and then most importantly in my mind, adult education specialists to generate these three to five minute sessions on specific topic areas. So here you see a sampling of caregiver wellness and home safety. If you click into caregiver wellness, you receive specific lessons on different topics and then the top to-dos for that area. These easy to digest learning modules look a lot like a Khan Academy for caregivers, if you will. Uh, you, it goes through a different lesson of talking about commonly, you know, thing, things that you might commonly find when caring for an aging loved one. We also have embedded clinically validated instruments. So there's question one from the modified caregiver strain index. As folks go through that and take, that in from, take those uh, assessments, we then are able to change the rest of the content to be relevant to what we see with the assessments that they're taking. So if Susan was a highly strained caregiver in this scenario, she would get more information on respite care, find relaxation techniques, and things of that nature. Then she can click in to see additional information by topic. So watching videos on joining a caregiver support group, why might that be relevant, where can she find those in her community, and other things, Family Medical Leave Act, finding time for yourself, respite care, things like that. The last piece is this kind of customized evidence-based to-do list. So a smart checklist. We heard from folks that they wanted kind of a central repository or what are the tactical things I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, this can obviously be done via text message, automated phone call, sending it to other members of the care team, and alerts and notifications tied to that. On the tools front, so I mentioned medication management is very challenging in caring for an aging loved one, particularly with dementia. So here we have what is kind of a visual pillbox 
Again, this can be formulated from a pharmacy record where we pull that data, or also folks can add medications relatively quickly here. Uh, we have a pre-validated list from the FDA. You'll see here that we do a, um, thank you, we do a uh, check from the beers criteria if it's a potentially inappropriate med for seniors. It's particularly important for over-the-counter medications that folks are giving to their loved one. We also can create a weekly and daily view of meds that need to be managed. And again, remember, this can be delivered on mobile, tablet, or on a PC. Uh, we also are integrated with wireless medical monitoring devices. Uh, so where folks have kind of a blood pressure monitor in the home or a glucose monitor, we're able to take in all of those readings um, and populate this again in one central place. So I think an important piece of this is how does this all roll up into a summary view and how do we begin to kind of tackle some of these issues of connectivity to the formal system? We heard from caregivers, they walk into a seven and a half minute caregiver or seven and a half minute Medicare visit. It's really difficult to have a meaningful conversation with their physician. What we've begun to do here is aggregate the information of everything that's gone on in the tool thus far. Um, and we also do have kind of a backside of this that's been developed for our um, hospital and Medicare Advantage partners where they're able to actually see across their entire patient panel from the information that you know, Susan would be putting into this tool. Uh, so does this approach work? So there's been many studies um, that have looked at many of the interventions that we're talking about here. So caregiver needs assessment, caregiver education, and activation. Um, and these are kind of representative results of a particular study that was done for uh, dementia population. And you can see that there are meaningful results. Um, and what we've really tried to do with CareSolver is operationalize this approach in a more scalable uh, way through the use of technology. So just quickly on go-to-market strategy. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we believe that we need to be partnered with the formal care system and this needs to be prescribed through a hospital at a point of discharge or at a annual Medicare visit um, or partnering with other Medi our Medicare Advantage plans or other risk-bearing entities and we're running pilots kind of across those three uh, different stakeholders to really validate the solution. Um, just quickly, we feel like we have a well-positioned team uh, to execute on this with folks with uh, long-term experience in senior care space and geriatrics, um, and then kind of our backgrounds are in the healthcare space, and we do have a, a fantastic tech wizard who develops all of this. So thanks very much for your time. With that, I will uh, open it up to questions, um, and I will ask Eric to join me up here. Great. Thank you guys. And believe it or not, they are full-time students. This has been done in their spare time while also having a full course load at HBS. Are there any questions first from the judges, maybe? Sure. Uh, so the way the model we've been pursuing so far is uh, you know, trying to give it out free to caregivers. Uh, we think at the end of the day, you know, trying to charge caregivers is, is challenging. Uh, we think that there's a whole a host of stakeholders that benefit uh, when caregivers are able to provide better care with less stress uh, more efficiently. And so we're kind of in the process of partnering with those stakeholders to try to get them to push it out uh, so they can capture the benefits and, and caregivers uh, and their loved ones can benefit uh, free of charge. Let's see. It's a heavy content model. What's the cost of keeping the content current? Sure. Um, so we have a pretty efficient pro kind of content production process where we partner with clinical folks or subject matter experts. Uh, they kind of draw the outlines, then we put that into folks who specialize in health literacy and adult education. They kind of come up, generate the content, and then there's kind of a back and forth to, to, to put it together. So the cost is, 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 is not, I mean, it's significant, but it's not that material. Um, so from an economics perspective, we can, we can make that work. Um, you know, I think just to comment on the idea of, of coming up with your own content, uh, we've had a lot of questions about that. I think the problem is that it's kind of, with content, there's kind of water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink, so to speak. So people kind of, in, in all of our user feedback sessions, what we get is that, you know, there, there's information everywhere. Uh, you know, I'm kind of overloaded. What I want it done is distilled down to me. I don't want to spend my day reading about healthcare content. I want it distilled down to me, given to me in a very kind of uh, digestible, easy to understand format so that I can, uh, you know, kind of go about my day. Okay, I'm gonna sure. start with Julia. And the caregiver gets this to the computer and the and smartphone. Yeah. Uh, yes. And and if there is a need for navigating the caregiver, because this is a, this complex. Yes. Sure. For those of us in the hospital. Sure. Yeah, so I think that's where we think that the partnership with uh, uh, the formal healthcare system can be incredibly powerful. Uh, hospitals, ACOs, you know, all manners of organizations are investing huge dollars in building out these large care management workforces, um, and there's still kind of a big gap between 
you know, the, though the kind of the formal care system and reaching that end user. And so we think that that's where the, the power of this type of technology can really be unlocked by partnering with them so that as, you know, as needed, you can kind of lean into their resources as well. So the caregiver coaching, is that an immediate response? So if I'm a caregiver, I'm at home, I have this system, am I able to get an immediate response to a question or a situation? Sure. Um, so uh, as, of, as of this very moment, no, uh, where we're working, we're doing a pilot with a Medicare Advantage plan, and so there you'll be able to get a, a very quick response. Um, and then we're also building out kind of a community, uh, a community piece. Uh, so our hope is that users, kind of by creating a community where users can begin to interact with the, uh, one another, you know, you can source best practices that are either already stored or kind of in, in near real time uh, by engaging with other uh, caregivers in similar situations. So a question here. Yes. Um, coming back to costs, I think the marketing strategy is the right one because of the other stakeholders, but there's still a cost that would be associated with this, and oh, sure. what would that come out to be? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I mean, or we would, <laughs> yeah, we would, we would uh, obviously charge the kind of the entities that we're working with. Um, uh, you know, to be quite honest with you, a little bit of the, I mean, we do a kind of a subscription service where, you know, it's very uh, consistent with how hospitals kind of buy technology today. Uh, you know, I think a little bit of our costs are driven by uh, the marketing process of selling to hospitals, which is not a, a short, uh, kind of easy to do thing. So, you know, I mean, you're looking at kind of standard SaaS based technology prices. I mean, you'll, you'll see those range from 25K a year to you know, 500K a year, depending on, on what they're buying. So we'd be kind of somewhere in that range. What's the feedback as far as usability? Sure. Um, so I think that's where we think that we kind of have the greatest offer. We think that's one of the, probably the single most important thing we can do. Uh, so, you know, we've been doing kind of tons of user feedback sessions, user tests. Uh, we've gotten good, you kind of uh, good feedback so far. Uh, there's always more work to do. So, you know, our, I think we see that as kind of a, a process of continuous improvement that will uh, continue, or that, that will last the lifetime of, of, of our work with CareSolver. So given this is, this is not for consumers, you're trying to sell to third parties, what is the value proposition that you're hoping that uh, sure. you know, will be persuasive to, uh, to those sure. funders? Yeah, sure, I think uh, you know, better, uh, better armed caregivers are, uh, you know, provide more effective care. Uh, if you look at kind of costs associated with uh, cognitively impaired pet populations, first of all, it's a very popul hard population to kind of effectively engage and, and improve their health. Uh, so, you know, you, you know, if you can kind of drive down costs there, there's a ton of opportunity. Uh, and so one, you know, can hospitals and risk-bearing entities, et cetera, et cetera, generate cost savings by engaging caregivers and helping them provide better care. And then I think too, uh, you know, there's kind of happier caregivers are, you, uh, oftentimes it's kind of that sandwich generation who's in charge of, of health care for their parent, uh, for frankly, it's women who are most caregivers, so their husband and then their children. Uh, and, and so, you know, they're kind of key uh, critical decision makers that steer a lot of health care. Uh, so people are very eager to kind of connect with them. And this is an opportunity to connect with them around one of their most pressing challenges and kind of biggest pain points. Uh, so that's a bit, another really big value. Great. Thank you, guys. I'm going to cut it off in the interest of time.